You've talked about in videos before the difference between endotoxic shock and shock caused by super antigen. Can you say the high yield points for US simile? Yeah, that's obviously really important. And US simile is obsessed with this, okay, for the immuno component. So when you have endotoxic shock, e.g. due to urosepsis, E. coli, what's going to happen is the lipid A component of LPS, lipopolysaccharide, that's your endotoxin for the gram negative, that is going to bind to CD14, aka toll-like receptor 4 on macrophages. It's not nitpicky, it's basic, and US simile wants you to know it. What's going to happen is the macrophage will release cytokines. IL-1 causes fever. TNF-alpha causes increased vascular permeability, low systemic vascular resistance, and low blood pressure. Now, the cytokines have overlap in terms of their mechanisms and their actions, but that's what you need to know for US simile. Now, in contrast, super antigen, such as toxic shock syndrome toxin, TSST, toxin of staph aureus, whether it's tampons, whether it's cotton packing in the nose following a nasal bleed, that's going to bridge MHC2 on the macrophage with T-cell receptor on the CD4 plus T-cell. That's going to cause the macrophage to release cytokines, same as before. IL-1 causes fever, TNF-alpha causes increased vascular permeability, low systemic vascular resistance, and decreased blood pressure. Also, if they show you, let's say, a cellulitis, and they tell you there's gram-positive cocci in clusters or in chains, which would be staph aureus versus strep pyogenes, respectively, for skin infection, if they ask you the immunologic mechanism, you're going to choose MHC2 and T-cell receptor. Exotoxin A of strep pyogenes causes toxic shock-like syndrome, okay? So if you get toxic shock syndrome, or if you get toxic shock like syndrome, answer on your simile, MHC2 and T cell receptor. If you get endotoxic shock, it's going to be CD14, aka toll like receptor 4.